I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite video on the Citadel. Alright, here we go everybody, welcome to a new video, uh, just giving a video for Mass Effect 2, I want to give this a review, so let's get this started. So, uh, with Mass Effect 2, it takes pretty much, takes right after Mass Effect 1, after you defeat uh, all the bad guys and everything like that out there in space, and uh, you, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to give a lot away, but things happen. You get rebuilt, things like that. You get killed, you get rebuilt by uh, an organization that you were trying to put down, but now they're, they're helping you out in the as a uh, perspective of saving humanity. So that's pretty good. Um, what could I say about this game? Mass Effect 2 uh, is much more action oriented than Mass Effect 1 simply because their skill tree in Mass Effect 2 isn't as developed as Mass Effect 1. The inventory uh, is not as large, so weapon customization as long as weapon selection isn't there compared to uh, Mass Effect 1, as well as armors. Uh, I saw a huge decrease in armor selection. There was N7 armor and collector armor, inferno armor, terminus armor, and that was about it. For Mass Effect 1, I was able to choose a different armor within the first 12 minutes of the game, so that was a huge disappointment. I kind of like the customization, kind of, you know, I'm a Spectre, I get to do whatever I want, and that includes not wearing the N7 armor, so um, that's what I miss. Although, Mass Effect 2 does draw a larger base crowd because it is uh, further action developed than uh, the first one as well as it picks up right off the bat here in the action sequ sequence and there's a lot of things going on so you get excited. Uh, not that I want to say that you know it's luring the dumb people, but it truly is. So uh, for the true for the true RPG fans, the ones that know uh, RPG elements, they're gonna kind of say, yeah, this game is good, but at the same time, it doesn't follow its own roots. And I I'd have to I'd have to stand and agree with that because Mass Effect is a great game on its own. They've done a lot of things to improve on it. A lot of things that we complained about, like the frame rate issues, the uh, glitches, the bugs here and there, the Mako, um, as well as the elevator ride. Those were all things that we complained about, but they fixed a. In the process, they got rid of a few things that 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 we kind of liked. I guess we weren't being too elaborate. We wanted uh, we wanted a less we wanted less inventory, but at the same time, we wanted things. I mean, the end of the game, I was still using my N7 armor. I would never use my N7 armor in Mass Effect One. I was using like Titan 13 or something, the, the heavy class armor. So. Um, so that that was that's like my little ramble about the the Mass Effect, like what I think of it. Like, don't get me wrong, this game is fantastic. The storyline follows right after from Mass Effect One. It's great. You've got all these big voice actors, Martin Sheen, excellent, excellent, excellent. I think he really pulled it off. This is his first time doing a voiceover in a video game, and I think he did a fantastic job. Uh, Keith David was here again. Didn't hear a lot from him, but you know what? did a fine job. Lance Henriksen Admiral ha as Admiral Hackett, he was not in the game as well. You heard quite a bit of him in Mass Effect 1. Uh, Michael Hogan from Battlestar Galactica, he played as Colonel Ty and um, in Mass Effect 2 he, he was Captain Bailey from the C-Sex Customs, C -Sex Customs and uh, he did a fine job. Trisha Helfer, Seth Green, uh, Adam Baldwin, uh, Yvonne Strahovski, Strahos, I, I apologize if I say that wrong, uh, the really good looking girl from Chuck, <laughs> uh, so, you know, they have, for the characters, and for Mass Effect 1, they have a lot of cameos, there's only two playable, uh, two playable squad mates you can have from Mass Effect 1 that go into Mass Effect 2, and of course, they're the ones that you don't like from Mass Effect 1, but you know what, you play the game, you listen to them, you read their story, or you, uh, listen to the, what they have to say, and you kind of, you start to like them, I mean, hell, I started to like them, I even slept with one, so, it was, it was good, it was good. So if I had to rate this game, I would give it, I'd give it a 9.5, because, I wouldn't give it a full 10, because it's not, not the RPG that I was expecting, I mean, I mean, yes, the storyline was fantastic, they really improved the combat, but in the process, they got rid of a lot of, of the, their, a lot of their, and I say their because that's their RPG elements of a game. So, uh, you know, uh, can't wait for Mass Effect 3. 
if you guys want to rate comment subscribe down below comment down below subscribe to the right uh, this is the collector's edition it was eighty dollars and uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll uh, all as well <laughs> almost forgot <laughs> got my uh, finally managed to get the music from the afterlife and this is a big shout out to uh, Nolda Zaledo too because of all people I, I've been searching all the forums all the websites even sent I even gave uh, Bioware a call down on South End and I was saying hey you know you guys uh, <laughs> can you guys tell me what song you guys used in the afterlife and they couldn't tell me but of all people my buddy Nolan he's the one to find the song and send it over to me so I've got that one as well as uh, as well as, uh, hang on, let me check. The lower afterlife song. The one, the huge ass rave song. So I thought that was great. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later.